Hello and welcome to the MA Japanese Studies webinar. I'd be very happy to take questions at the end. I'm Dr. Griselda Skirsch. I'm the program convener for the MA Japanese Studies. And as such, it's a pleasure to host this, this webinar. Um, to go straight to the next slide, I think uh, the MA Japanese Studies at SARS is absolutely amazing. It is SARS as such is one of the biggest centers for, uh, for the study of Japan in the world. If we go across departments, we probably have the most academics working in one way or another with Japan. And um, although we may be split up over different departments, we come together to work on this MA in Japanese studies, which therefore is a really wide and broad um, area studies program about Japan and will offer you a wide array of subjects and disciplines. We aim to give you as much depth and as well as a lot of breadth of knowledge about Japan so that you don't just walk away knowing bits and pieces here and there, but to be as comprehensive as possible in order to um, then walk away and work potentially with Japan or on Japan in the end. Um, normally, an MA Japanese studies would be one year full time. You can choose to do the MA Japanese studies part time. This would then go over two or three years. So we would adjust the time you spend with us um, accordingly, meaning that you take less teaching time per term or per year and spread it over those years of time. This particularly if you want to do the MA Japanese studies as a um, sort of next while working so that it allows you to have your career as well as um, a degree at the same time. Um, across the, the MA Japanese studies is based in the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures and across this department we work on all sorts of East Asian languages so China, Korea and Tibet are part of that department and in order to also show that Japan is not an isolated case in East Asia but indeed has links um, to the surrounding region you will have to take a 15 credit meaning one half one term um, core module uh, called Connections and Intersections in East Asia, which will be team taught from across the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures, but essentially aims to give you ideas about how East Asia these days interact because interacts because the region is incredibly important. The other core component you need to take is a dissertation, um, which is 16 credits um, worth, it's 10,000 words long, and you would be expected to, uh, com um, to complete this dissertation after the end of the teaching time, so from April or so onwards. Um, in order to fulfill our aim to give you as much breadth and depth of knowledge, you would have to take a minimum of three disciplines. They would be advertised on the web page as such, so we cover, for instance, media, history, economics, management, etc. And under these dis under these various disciplines, you can each choose, um, for instance, at least one half module, one uh, 15 credit module. But in order to also maintain this aim of having enough breadth, we would ask you to not take more than 60 credits in any one of those disciplines. One of those modules that you then choose is a module you have to write your dissertation on. Um, so you would be asked to pick one of those modules as what we call your major. So um, if you apply and you get your offer at some point after the application process, you will be contacted in order to uh, choose one of those majors. And then the academic in charge of the module would either take you on. And that means they become your supervisor and help you with the writing of the dissertation. So um, we also offer the option to take the MA Japanese studies with an intensive language um, component and you can combine it with intensive Japanese or intensive 
um, Korean. That would mean the automatically Japanese studies becomes a two-year MA program because you would have to combine the study of Japanese or Korean for that matter with the study of the discipline and therefore do this over two years. It would be too intense to just do it over one year. So um, it's of an exciting MA. We try to work hard and to make your time with us as pleasant as possible. And these are a couple of current modules that you can look forward to. So Japanese modernity one and two is a history module um, where you can look at how Japan as a modern state, modern country came into being and what its current historical trajectory or the research on current on the historical trajectories are. Identity and social relations in Japanese is a linguistics module which would look at how language reflects um, Japanese identity and social relations because Japanese as such has a very gendered and hierarchical language and how this, for instance, changed. Censoring Japan is my own module. I, um, um, I researched Japanese television. So this is my research. Basically, it's a social cultural history of Japanese television in which we look at how Japanese television became big. And in Japan, also, we tend to think of Japan like anime and Ghibli and Kurosawa Akira. Um, as a matter of fact, the predominant media in Japan is actually television, not necessarily film. Film has been pirated upon by television, so that's what we learned. Japanese traditional drama gives an overview of, as the title says, no uh, bunaku, kabuki, kyogen, um, and give you an intensive sort of historical background and also significant plays. Management in Japan um, is directed towards people who want to see how the management structure works. And uh, Japanese transnational cinema, as the name said, would give you a historical overview from Kurosawa to um, Asia Extreme, which was, if you don't know it, um, a horror film series promoted in the West here in order to show Japan as this extreme horror country but also Studio Ghibli, which kind of um, provided the counterpoint. I'm now very happy to take your questions, any questions you may have. Um, if you could type them in, I'd be very, I'll answer them. Julia, thank you for the um, for the question. Julia was asking um, the MA can be combined with an intensive language, but the MA whether the MA as such includes any language. And um, Julia was wondering where the MA graduates go typically go on to. As for the first question, um, the intensive the MA as such can, includes language. You can take any language offered in the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures. But the difference between this kind of language study as, and the intensive language study would be that it would only be um, one unit. So one year, one unit of language, whereas the intensive language um, MA offers you four units over two years. So there is a lot more intensive training and progression is assured. You would have to go to Japan for the intensive language. MA, which you don't do for the one year MA. So it would just be, depending on your level, either an improvement of your level or you're just about to sort of post beginners level. As to the question where MA graduates typically go on to, it depends because the MA Japanese studies has a wide array of students. A lot of students do do the MA part time and have a career. So it's for their personal benefit within jobs. Um, some of these already work with Japan and then want to continue working with Japan by adding on the MA in Japanese studies. Others um, come and want to do the PhD in some Japan related topics or would stay in academia. Obviously, the people having the career will stay in their career and this can be very worried. We've had people working in the NHS 
to bankers and lawyers and they stayed in their career. I have heard of other students who were part of the MA who worked then subsequently in creative industries uh, or banks. So it's a wide array of students because also the MA is such, it's so wide that it's hard to get um, like a clear picture of where everybody in the end ends up. But as I said, it's got a wide career option. Finally, Julia was also wondering when the course begins, and that would be um, end of September with, re with the welcome week, with the um, actual teaching beginning, either like the first full week, you know, or the first week in October. So very late the, in September, or very early in October, the term dates are published on the SOAS webpage. Um, the um, Erica is wondering about the his, whether history from the Edo is is that history from the Edo to modern times is covered, whether previous history Heian Nara periods are covered, and um, fortunately um, not currently at the moment. They feature in the culture modules, the pre-modern culture modules that we offer, but we don't have a a history model per se that deals with pre-modern history. Ryan, um, thank you for the question. Ryan was wondering um, how long the, the um, intent, did you mean the intensive language MA um, can take when done part-time? We normally would say four years. Um, because for the, sort of you do the language first and the discipline second, um, for the simple reason there are quality assurance guidances that I don't want to bore you with, but that does um, allow for no other split than doing it four years. Um, when uh, Brian follow, uh, Ryan follow, sorry, Ryan follows up on this. Uh, if someone takes both the intensive language and the MA uh, and the MA Japanese studies, um, which, which one comes first? We would recommend that you do the language first for the simple reason is that it helps you with choosing your discipline when you have a certain knowledge of Japanese, which would not or because we, we tend to target the um, people who don't have that much Japanese yet. So it's, an, it's recommended that you do the languages first, um, as it would also help you with the dis dissertation writing when you can access Japanese sources, which perhaps otherwise you would not be able to access. So it's a recommendation, but there is no clear, absolutely, this, you have to do it that way. It's just that we think, it's more sensible if you get the language first and the discipline second. Um, Ryan has one more question. In terms of level, where well, I would say the line between beginner and above is, is um, as Ryan is studying towards the JLPT N4 in July. Um, I'm afraid that that is a bit hard to answer. First of all, um, could I suggest that you get in touch with my colleague, Dr. Barbara Pizziconi, who actually convenes the Intensive Language MA, um, because she would be able to answer that question much more appropriately than I do. However, um, irrespective of your JLPT level, we do, when you enter SOAS at any level, even as undergraduates, um, unless you have absolutely no knowledge of Japanese at all, ask you to take the placement test so that we can put you in the right level for your language acquisition module. And that goes for the intensive language MA in the same way as for even if you just choose to take the one module of language in the normal MA Japanese studies. So that we are sure that the level of Japanese we aim to teach you is just right. So um, if you have Japanese, it'd be good to indicate that so that you can be invited to take this language test and therefore see whether you can put, be put in the beginners or even in the sort of the intermediate pathway. Um, Erica has another question regarding the dual degree program that we offer with the Sofia University in Japan and to ask me how it works and whether it's possible to decide later. 
Um, the do of degree program is sort of an add-on to the MA Japanese studies with us. You can um, decide that at any point before the application deadline uh, that Sophia um, has for you. So it doesn't have to be indicated at the point of entry to us because the idea how this works is that you do your MA Japanese studies with us and then Sophia will accept the credit that you take with the that you get from us and then integrate the credit that you have into their degree but you have to still write our dissertation as well as theirs so that in the end you end up with two MAs one from Sophia and one from SOAS. So Sophia um, has you, you would have to apply to us and then you have to separately apply to Sophia. So it's not an automatic pathway. It's at their discretion, just as much as it's our discretion if someone from Sophia came and wanted to do the MA. Both universities have the right to approve or not to approve. So it's not an automated thing. It's just an option, an add-on. So, um, and we therefore only ever point students towards Sophia and then sort of pass them on so that they can deal with Sophia themselves. But the um, actual work of the sort of the credit transfer is at the side of, of Sophia and their acceptance of your your grades that you have received so far the point of application. And Sophia, I'm sorry to just add on to that. Sophia um, normally has roughly an, a March-ish um, application deadline. So by March, you would have to make the decision whether you really want to go to Sofia or not. Um, Erica wanted clarification as to what kind, what March I'm talking about, the um, March of the season application year or the March during the MA programme. And I meant the March during the MA programme with us because it's a credit transfer. Um, mechanism, so you need to accrue credit from us in order to go there, unless you wanted to start from Sofia, in which case you would um, apply to Sofia whenever you wanted to, but could then only go to SOAS in October or September, October. All right, if no one has any more questions, I look forward to seeing some of you at least face to face on Saturday. Um, and have a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining.